What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Configuring Cisco Threat Response. I'm Adi Shankar from Cisco Security Integrations Team, and in this tutorial, we'll walk through configuring the Stealthwatch Enterprise module in Threat Response. Using telemetry data, Stealthwatch provides industry-leading machine learning and behavioral modeling specific to your business. Threat Response can use this advanced traffic analytics data in conjunction with other security technologies to dramatically cut the time and effort needed to detect, investigate, and remediate cybersecurity threats. A quick look at our agenda here. First, we'll see a basic investigation before configuring the Stealthwatch Enterprise module. Next, we'll do a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the module configuration. And finally, we'll return back to our original investigation to see the Stealthwatch module in action. Let's get started with the simple investigation. We can see here that I'm investigating one private IP address of 192.168.249.166. I can see that I don't have much information about this internal host to begin with. In fact, none of my modules have reported any data back about the IP address. We will revisit this investigation after bringing in the capabilities of Stealthwatch. Let's begin our integration in the Stealthwatch Management Console. In the top right, mouse over the Settings icon and select Threat Response Configuration. From this page, we can see there are two parts of the configuration. The first part allows Stealthwatch to post alarms to Threat Response's Incident Manager. This means less time searching multiple products for security alarms, instead, they will be centralized in the Incident Manager. This part is also what drives the UI components for the pivot options between Stealthwatch and Threat Response. Before we worry about the second part, Let's get the incidents and pivot options working by selecting Add New Configuration. The cloud region defaults to North America but can be changed to Europe or Asia. I can also see that I need two pieces of information, which are the API Client ID and the API Client Password. Let's jump back to Threat Response to get these keys. From the Threat Response console, select the Settings icon in the top right. In the left pane, select API Clients and then click Add New API Credentials. We'll give it a brief name and select all the scopes. Select Add New Client to generate the keys, which I'll copy to my clipboard. Now that we have the required information, back in the Southwatch Management Console, we can simply paste in our client ID and then the same for our client password. Then hit Save. In a moment, we should see the status change to Connected. Great. The second part of the configuration involves registering the Stealthwatch Management Console to the cloud. This will allow Threat Response to query Stealthwatch about particular observables while investigating. Start by clicking New Device Registration. Now we can see that I need a device token. Let's jump back to Threat Response to get our token. From the left settings pane, select Devices, then select Manage Devices. This opens a new tab in the Security Services Exchange portal. From here, we can press the plus icon to add a new device. I'll leave the options as default and select Continue. Now that we have generated our token, let's head back to Stealthwatch Management Console. From here, it's as simple as pasting in the registration token and clicking Register. Shortly, we should see the status change to Enrolled. Alright, great. Just to double confirm a successful registration, back in the Security Services Exchange portal, we can select the Refresh icon to refresh our device list. Once I scroll down, I should see Stealthwatch Enterprise version 7.1.2 is successfully registered. Lastly, it's time to complete the final piece of the integration by adding the Stealthwatch Enterprise module to Threat Response. From Threat Response, in the Settings pane, Select Modules, select Add a New Module, and then find the Stealthwatch Enterprise Module and add a new one. The final step is as easy as selecting our Stealthwatch Management Console in the dropdown and then hitting Save. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We have finished our not-so-complex configuration in a matter of three minutes. Now that our module is added and our configuration is complete, let's revisit our original investigation. The relations graph now shows that the IP address in question has connected to two external IPs and one other internal IP. My investigation has also yielded two indicators, 
one for data hoarding, and one for an outbound file transfer. To the right, in the modules dropdown, I can see that my investigation is leveraging the capabilities of StealthWatch. The module has provided visibility into real data from my environment which I never would have seen otherwise. Let's take a look at a StealthWatch incident to see how ALF's threat response and StealthWatch work together. From the Incident Manager page, I can see StealthWatch recently posted a data hoarding incident. Once I select the incident, I have the option to investigate it, change the status, or link a casebook. Down below, using the pivot options on the IP I'm investigating, I can pivot directly to the host report in StealthWatch. The StealthWatch UI also includes pivot options. Selecting the options icon next to any IP observable and then clicking Cisco Threat Response presents a slew of options, including searching for this IP in AMP for endpoints, as well as investigating it in Threat Response. Now that we have seen the powerful functions of this integration, I encourage all StealthWatch Enterprise customers to take advantage of Threat Response's incident response capabilities. Beyond just StealthWatch, I encourage all cybersecurity professionals alike to use Threat Response to more efficiently and effectively conduct security investigations. After all, it's free for Cisco customers. And last but not least, I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more tutorials from Cisco's security integrations team.